This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Okay, again, um, it's seven o'clock. We're gonna call this meeting of the North Haven Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, my name is Jennifer Coppola and I'm the North Haven Planning and Zoning Commission's Council. As indicated in the posted agenda, tonight's regular meeting of the commission is taking place remotely via Zoom, video conference and conference call. The video conference link and dial-in conference call number for the meeting were provided to the public in the agenda for the meeting posted on the town's website. For those listening, I would ask that you mute your phones if you're able so that we do not get any background noise. I have two very important reminders. Um, first, every time someone speaks, you must state your name and title if you have one for the record. And second, we must be careful not to speak over one another so that all participants can hear what is being said and we have a clear record. Uh, for this reason, when it comes time for the commission to comment or to ask any questions of any of the presenters, the chair will ask the secretary, Teresa ranciato Vili, to call the roll, and when it comes time for the commission to vote on any matter, the secretary will also, ask, um, will also call the roll again. A recording of this meeting will be uploaded to the town's website, and NHTV also contacted me last week asking that I forward to them a recording of the video conference to air on NHTV, so I will be doing that as well. Um, and Teresa, I'm going to turn it over to you to call the roll of the commission. And when you hear your name, please unmute your phone and say here. After uh, Teresa calls the roll, the land use administrator, Alan Fredrickson, does have a couple of changes to the agenda that he does need to note for the record. Thank you. Go ahead, Teresa. Okay. Roll call. Fern Carlson, chairman. Here. Yeah. E. Richard Wilson, vice chairman. Not present. Teresa Ranciato Vili, present. James Gilletti? Here. Brian Cummings? Here. Joseph Salamini? Here. Roderick Williams? Here. Paul Wyman? Here. Okay, roll call is finished. So we're on to the agenda. And there are no public hearings. Again, Jennifer Coppola, counsel to the commission for the record. Alan, I don't know if you want to at this point just know uh, the two matters that are coming off the agenda. Yes, uh, for the record, items number three and four, P2014 and P2014A uh, are going to be postponed to the three August meeting to give them an opportunity to uh, address some of those comments with staff. So that'll come off. And the other note that I have is, uh, is that uh, we, we, we didn't send you any minutes. Um, we'll deal with these minutes uh, at the August meeting. Um, hopefully we'll be a little more uh, uh, able to do that. We have a draft of them, but I wasn't able to get them out to you in a timely manner. Sorry about that. Again, Jennifer Coppola, counsel to the commission. Um, Alan, could you just note for the record too who, who will be sitting on the two site plan applications that you do have going forward? Yeah. Because we're um, missing Rich Wilson. I, I think Rich is, um, I ran into um, his wife who said he was intending to join us tonight. So he may join us um, in, in progress. Um, let me give a little look. If Rich doesn't show, um, for a minute, hold on a second. I'm not doing it. Sounds like the music from Psycho. I just would make that. <laughs> Um, I think all of our regular members sat last time. Um, not sure who would be up 
first. Um, I I thought I thought Rich. Paul sat. I, I thought no, oh, here, okay, here's Rich. Rich is here. Could I? Here it is, Rich. Okay. Solve that problem. Okay. You so the record, and this is Jennifer <laughs> Coppola, uh, counsel to the commission. Uh, the record should just note that Rich Wilson, regular member, has joined. Thank you. Fair enough. I want to get out of the picture. What do I do with this? Turn it up. Why am I in the picture? <laughs> You're on the iPhone. It, 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 appears, it appears that we're getting feedback again, Jennifer Coppola, for the record. I think we're getting feedback because Rich has joined by both iPhone and iPad. So if, yes, you should just hang get up the on. iPhone. He couldn't get on. Okay, better. Okay, okay. thank Sorry. you. And Teresa, you can read the first the first site plan. Thank you. Okay, item number one, number P20-07, site plan application of 576 Washington Avenue, LLC, applicant and owner relative to 576 Washington Avenue, map 96, lot two, plan entitled Proposed Morrow Motors Pre-Owned Automotive Sales and Service, 576 Washington Avenue, Route 5, North Haven, Connecticut, prepared by Mylona McBroom, dated June 7, 2019, revised January 29, 2020, scale one inch equals 40 feet, CB40 zoning district. Okay. Um, is there anybody, Vern? Is there anybody here? That's yes, uh, for the record, Tom Daly with Milo and McBroom uh, presenting to the commission this evening. Thank you for the time. Uh, we are uh, asking for a site plan amendment to the plan that we presented to you as uh, I believe we were, uh, actually uh, Alan and staff have put together a nice summary of, of where we were and how we, I, we came to this point. But we received a uh, approval from this commission uh, back in, I believe it was uh, July of 2019. It was for a, a used car uh, dealership to support the BMW and the Mercedes next door. Um, in light of everything that's been going on in the last 90 days and, um, and longer, uh, Moro Motors is looking to take more of a phased approach to this site plan. Frankly, the costs and, and kind of the business interruptions that have occurred in the last uh, 90 days have resulted in a kind of another look at this project. Uh, they are still very much committed to it, but uh, they are looking to reduce the size of the, and the scope of the project. So, for example, um, if you saw the old plan, we had a building that was about 18,000 square feet and actually had some uh, very kind of complex drop-off area and other components that increase the cost. Uh, this plan before you this evening has become a, a more simpler building and it's 12,000 square feet. So uh, it's about a 37% uh, reduction in the building size. Uh, the building would be designed in a way that could be expanded in the in the um, in the future, but once again, just a, more of a simple approach to it. In addition to that, uh, there's about 1.2 acres of uh, gravel and pavement area that was proposed to the rear of the property. Uh, gravel and pavement is not inexpensive, so um, we are. We are proposing to pull the tree line back at this time and reduce the uh, overall footprint of the development, but um, that's a cost savings that we're looking to do there. The one thing we are look, still looking to include in the plan as indicated on the town engineer's comments is we are still putting in all the underground storm drainage infiltration system to accommodate future expansions if we want to go you know come back to this commission and go back to the old plan we believe that infrastructure it's well worth the investment now so in the short term, yeah, it's going to be, you know, well oversized, um, but um, once it goes underground, it's, it's, it's cheap, cheaper to um, just expand in the future without that. But um, 
the, but I would say on the record that if uh, business continues to be positive um, for more motors, we potentially will be coming back into this um, commission in the future to uh, kind of go back to the old plan and, and clear more to the east. But uh, as you know, when we came back, to, uh, when we were approved in 2019, we showed no phasing limits. It was, uh, it was all or nothing. Um, so we're proposing at this point to simply the same approach we gave to you uh, last time, just a, a reduced version of it. Um, I have re reviewed the conditions of approval and the town engineer's comments. Uh, frankly, it appears these to be uh, almost identical, if not the same comments as um, the conditions of approval from back in July of, um, I'm sorry, of 2019. We have no objection to those comments at that time, and we still have no objection, and we have no uh, problem incorporating those into final um, plans. Uh, with that, um, I'd be more than ha happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Yes, this is uh, Bernie, your chairman. Um, are you intending, is, is, is Mike Moore intending to go forth with this project or just to put it on hold for a bit and come back to bring the back up to size again? No, this is, is, this is actually um, a path to move forward. Uh, frankly, uh, he, I think he started to look at the numbers and, and the costs associated with the full plan. Mike is fully committed to going forward with the project. Okay, that's, uh, that's all I have here. Thank you. Um, this is this is Teresa Ranciato Vili. Um, so the the um, photometric light plan. I mean, when are we going to get that? I just want to make sure that that comes in, and there will be no light on the uh, landowners in the back, especially. It, um, it was submitted, Teresa. So if you look in your information packet, it should be um, at least on the website. I don't know which document number it was, but it was on the website. And we did mimic the, it was the, it was prepared by the same lighting consultant. So we, um, we mimicked what we did before we just pulled it back. Let me just see if I can try to get online now and look at it. Is that good for you, Teresa? What ha I saw the condition, it's under one of the conditions, yeah. and it says that showing the photometric light plan showing no um, trespass beyond property lines. So I didn't see it in here. I, I guess I could look a little harder, but. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking feverishly right now, and um, yeah, I don't see I it. I don't see it in mine. Photometric my, plan. Teresa, what? this is wrong. We don't have that plan, that lighting plan that I know of. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, right. I, see a, I see a light. No, but if, if you go on the website, it's document number three. Okay, okay. but it's so, not so, from packet. Okay. It has been provided. Is that what you're saying? It has been provided, and we can provide, and we are showing, especially now that we're pulling the clearing limit back, we're actually, you know, at zero well far away from uh, the residential properties. Yeah. Does that satisfy you, Teresa? Yes, that's Vern Carlson talking, yes. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? This is the Chairman Vern uh, speaking. Is there anyone else with any, any questions or comments? This is Brian Cummings. Uh, Tom, um, what are going to be the hours of operation for this? Will you be open Sundays or? Um. I'm sorry, Mr. Cummings, I don't have the specifics on that. Um, it would probably be consistent with the Moral Motors operations as they are today, okay. which is normal business hours. Um, at least my, I'd have to, <laughs> maybe I, as I stand here, but it would, it would not, it's, it's a complimentary business to their existing dealership, so they would probably mimic the existing hours they have on today. Uh, the complimentary side of this, Brian, again, <laughs> is it a sales and service used or pre-owned cars, uh, servicing uh, for that location? Correct. I mean, I think there's some uh, inventory stock that uh, that they get as with the, once again, Tom Daly for the record. Um, so a couple things is they are looking to um, store some additional inventory uh, when the, when the, 
deliveries come for BMW and Mercedes. Uh, there's some employees that may park over here, but also it, it a frees up, they can take their used cars off of the BMW and Mercedes, that frees up space for employees to park on the main property. So I think you're, you're gonna start to see that um, a lot of the used car inventory from the Mercedes and BMW will get tr shifted over to here. This is Brian again, Tom. Uh, up there on that part of Washington Avenue, there's a lot over there with that's just a vacant lot that's had cars parked in it for a long time. I don't know if the cars are still there. I haven't looked at that lot. Is this gonna take away some of those cars being parked there? Or? Well, that's the particular lot. So um, yeah, they're <laughs> kind of stored there. This'll, this will organize that in an appropriate way and through an, a formal site plan application through this commission. Right now it's somewhat of an informal stacking of cars over there, I guess I would describe it as. Thank you, Tom. Brian. Tom, this is Paul Wyman. Um, the question, of, I think you uh, were leading into it uh, as far as moving the, so the used cars that are in the Mercedes and the uh, BMW lots will now go to the, to this new lot and the, uh, this new dealership. And those new cars that are parked there currently are going to go in the, uh, back where the new is, uh, the new cars are parked. Correct. Yes, and, and there will still be some new um, inventory parked on, on this, um, but I think it just allows the, so it, it really is twofold. It really centralizes their used car sales and service, and then it does free up um, the, the existing facility to allow the, the employees to park over there. Um, so it actually has two benefits to it. Sorry, Paul Wyman again. Uh, park over where? Park over. See, uh, right now, I think the, the area that you, once again, 90s. Tom Daly for the record, I think if you went out there today, there's not only some cars are stacked on that lot, you were yes. described this lot, but there are also some employees park over here and have to walk over. Now that, now that we can pull the inventory off, it frees up more space for the BMW and the um, Mercedes Benz employees to park on that dealership property today. So there's less walking back and forth. Okay. This is Ron Carlson. Is that good with you, uh, Paul? Yes. That okay. answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if so I can, if I can just backtrack a little. This is Alan Fredrickson. Sorry to interrupt, but um, uh, yeah, Tom, I've I've looked now. I pulled up on the website um, uh, document number three. And there is a photometric plan there, uh, Teresa. It was not in our drawing set, which is why the comment was made. Um, but I do see it, so we'd be able to uh, uh, eliminate that particular condition of approval. As I, I have scanned the, uh, the three sides of the property line, um, I only see a little higher... Um, light trespass in the very front uh, up near Washington Avenue, which I don't believe is a, a negative thing, I believe is a positive thing. So I would tend to uh, say it looks good the way it is, but we'll have a slightly better look. So this is Jim Gilletti, a regular member, and my really only question is the plan does show the five foot wide sidewalks going across the front of it. And I know it's a scaled back project. Are the sidewalks going to be done as part of doing this project and not being put off for like 10 years? Uh, what, for the time, for the record, Tom Daly, they will be on the plan. They, and they will be installed. And that, that was one of the issues was we never showed a phase line. So if we, if we built only half the project, we didn't understand how, you know, uh, Alan would be able to sign off. So we decided to revise the plans. Right. But yes, the sidewalks will be put in with this plan. So as but before as shown. You, <coughs> yeah, before you open as a used car dealer on that site, the sidewalks will be in? That's correct. Very good. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Tim. This is Vern Carlson. Uh, this is Vern. Uh, Rich, you have any questions? No, I think they answered everything I was thinking about. The sidewalk and the lighting, yes. Okay, good. good. Um, well, at this point, is there any more comments or, or input from the commission? How about from the staff? Okay. No, this, nothing more here. Alan? 
No, nothing more here. Okay. I'm on set too, Vern. Andy Bevilacqua. Coming to you. I, I just turned the page. Andy, would you uh, give us your input on this? I saw what, I saw what they had to say here. It's yeah, Andy. Again, Andy Bevilacqua, um, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. The, the site is very, very similar in layout uh, in terms of grading, in terms of the approach for grading, approach for drainage. Uh, it's very similar to the original plan. The building's obviously relocated, uh, but the majority of the site uh, kind of remains the same, with the exception that the very rear section of the site is not being developed now. So, uh, so I didn't really have much to, uh, to, to put into it outside of the fact that recognizing that the site is very similar. Very similar to uh, Vern Carlson again. Uh, Andy, this is um, very similar to the last. Then the lighting plan, did you look at the lighting plan? I had not looked at the lighting plan, no. Uh, well, in any event, I'm sure that they'll, they'll work the lighting plan out with you. You'll work out with them and we'll put in the approval. But be sure that we don't have spill over. Is that good with you? That's good. Okay. Is any, does anyone else have any comment? Input. Again, Jennifer Coppola, your counsel for the record, wondering if any of the alternates have any comment. We have all three alternates participating. Paul Wyman, uh, alternate, not at this time. I just wanted to, I'm glad we talked about the sidewalk because if the employees are going to be walking along that road, um, we're going to need that in place. Hey, Colonel Carlson speaking, is there, is there any other any of the alternates have any comments? Uh, Rod Williams, I have no, no other comments. Okay. Joe Salamini, I have no comments. Well, this is Vern speaking again. Vern Carlson, I can no, I don't have a picture any longer. We can see you, Vern. Okay. Still see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that will close. That will close this uh, site plan hearing. Okay, uh, I'm going to read so number two. Would you read, in, would you read in the next site plan hearing, which is P20-12? Yes, number two, number P20-12, continuation of the site plan application of George Muster Manalis, applicant, 346 State Street, LLC, owner, relative to 346 State Street, map 34, lot 105, plan entitled site plan of property of 346 State Street, LLC, 346 State Street, Route 5, North Haven, Connecticut, prepared by CW International, dated March 3, 2020, scale one inch equals 20 feet, CB40 slash R20 zoning districts. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Is there anyone here to speak for the applicant? Yes, uh, this is George Cotter. Um, I'm an engineer from CW International, 2091 Highland Avenue, Cheshire, Connecticut. Um, we were asked la at our last meeting, we were doing a 3,500 square foot addition at 346 State Street to the rear building. It's an L-shaped parcel of about 60,000 square feet. Um, we had comments from the commission that concerned previous applications. Um, since that meeting, we revised the plans to add um, islands along the eastern portion of the rear property area. And uh, we also added islands at the end of rows. Um, we addressed uh, the comments of uh, the planner. Um, we have given um, the elevation of the proposed height of the lighting on the building. Um, we've noted it to be shielded so that there wouldn't be any glare off site. Um, and those would be set at 14 feet. Um, we will revise the wording for the buffer um, that we didn't miss, uh, we didn't put required in there. And um, we also uh, addressed uh, additional notes on the plan for items two through six of Alan's comments. Um, we had added an additional dry well and also a galley system to, to the plans uh, per the engineer's comment on uh, storm drainage. Um, we believe this will be sufficient to um, infiltrate 
uh, stormwater runoff um, to the <coughs> to back to the ground. It's a sand soil out there. Um, we've also done percolation uh, tests since uh, the comments from the the engineer, and we'll verify with him that. Um, the sizes that we've shown will be adequate uh, for the storm drainage. So we've addressed the islands uh, at end of rows and we had added the island a bit separating us from the property in front of 342. Um, I think those were the concerns uh, of the commission at the, at the last time. We've also added uh, trees uh, that to each of the areas that we added for the islands. Um, we added additional screening uh, at the rear property line of evergreens uh, into that uh, mix. There is a pr presently um, uh, deciduous and a mix of uh, some evergreens in the rear of the property that screens us uh, from the street above, um, which is uh, a 400 foot deep lot. It's over 400 feet and on 90 feet up to the structure on the above street above us. Uh, if the commission has any additional uh, questions, I'd be more than glad to address those at this time. Okay, this is Chairman uh, Vern Carlson. Um, uh, Teresa, let me go right to you. Do you have any questions, further questions in respect to this application? Um, I don't, it looks like um, from what I could see that all of our questions and our concerns were met um, with this plan. Thank you, Vern. Okay. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Uh, Jim? Yeah, same thing. Uh, thank you. It, they, everything we talked about last time seems to be included. Uh, I don't have any. <clears throat> Good. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, Rich? Right. It seems as though that they have stepped up to answer all of our questions from our last meeting. So, no, I have no other questions for them. Okay, thank you, Rich. Uh, Brian? Yeah, I just want to make sure this will satisfy uh, all the bonding requirements from the two incomplete plans from the past. Uh, Andy, maybe? Okay, we'll answer that for you in a minute, Brian. Brian uh, yeah, Alan? I'm mute. Andy, yeah, sorry. I think it's probably a better Alan question. <laughs> he had gone okay, Alan. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at the, there's oh, an outstanding. Guys, make sure, that's Alan Fredrickson speaking. Make sure you say who's speaking. Thanks. Yeah, this is Alan Fredrickson. Thanks, Teresa. The, um, the bonding requirement, there's an outstanding bond on the property. Um, in, I think we want to make sure most of those items are, are done. If Andy's just left with the latitude to establish, he, he can, cross off those items that see we haven't had a bond release request on this so he can take a look at it and determine uh what's outstanding in terms of the the dollar value of the work the bond that he set is at a minimum of twenty five hundred dollars so we can figure out what it nets out um it it may be right about at that twenty five hundred dollars i think you got a little s e control and a few islands so um not too bad, but it may climb a little over the 2,500. Yeah, well, Alan, this is uh, Vern Carlson. Um, it looks as though he did cover just about everything on your comments. Yeah, I think that's correct. And um, I, I I think we're, we're pretty much there. I, I would like to get the word required on, on the buffer note, uh, which is which is in well, my I'm comments, so, yeah. I saw you had that in there, yeah. But we'll yep. see. If that can. Well, well, all these. Uh, I'll, I'll bring this up in a minute. But is that that all for you, Alan? Or? Yeah, I think it is the. You know, just like a note that um, I didn't want to be presumptuous in knock out the um, any additional buffer plantings required. But at this point, I don't think they're necessary. I was pleasantly surprised to see that. I think five new trees uh, were added. And it looks pretty good at this point, despite the depth of the property uh, up on Harper Turnpike. I think it's still a pretty good buffer, and I'm glad that uh, that they've reinforced that. I think that puts us in a better position because you just never know what's going to happen in the future with that. Very good, Alan. Thank you. 
this is uh, Vern Carlson. Um, Brian, do you have any comments? Well, I'm all set, Vern. Thank uh, you. I'm sorry. Brian, here. I'm all set, Vern. Okay, you're all set. Has any of the any of the alternates have any comments or input on this application? I, this is Paul Wyman. I do have a, a question. Uh, the the bonds that were posted to begin with, one of the, one of the items was, I think, that curbing or buffer when they're coming off of State Street into the parking lot that uh, we were uh, making a point of last time. Was any of that 7,500 uh, of the bond for that too, or that, that needed to be added to the 25? Or um, uh, uh, Andy, are you going to take a look, take that into consideration? Yeah, we'll certainly look at that, but I believe that the majority of the uh, the uh, requirements from the prior approvals were addressed here. I think the biggest issue had to do with some of the islands in the parking lot uh, to the <laughs> south of the building, uh, and I think they've addressed that stuff there. But I'll look at that very closely as we uh, uh, put the final together. That was Andy Bevelock. Was Andy Bevelock, was sorry. <laughs> this is Paul Wyman. I think the... the the problem uh, that we were talking about was the uh, on the east side where on State Street where um, uh, the entry uh, we didn't like the that was different from the site plan they didn't uh, fulfill their obligations of the original site plan. So. Yeah, I think those items are covered. Sorry, this is Alan Fredrickson again. Uh, those items. Um, are now included on the plan. And I, I believe everything that had been missing is now included on the plan. So Andy and, and I can just take a look and make sure the balance sheet is good for the bond. Okay. Paul, does that satisfy you? Yes. Uh, Paul okay. Wyman, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone else have any comments or questions or, in respect to this application? Any of the alternates? This okay. is Joe Salamini. I have nothing. No. Ron Williams, I have nothing else. Thanks for the extra information here. Oh. Okay. Uh, staff, do you have any of have any other comments? Alan Fredrickson, no, I'm all set. Yeah, Andy Bevelock, all set here, Vern. Okay. Well. Any other comments from the commission at all? Vern Carlson speaking. Okay. Thank you very much, Well, That closes this uh, site plan hearing. Teresa, we, uh, we have. Uh, we need a motion to go into deliberation. I'm sorry? We need a motion to go into deliberation. Yeah, we need, well, let's see, we don't have any, the only other one we got to throw is, uh, yeah, the bond that's in deliberation, enforcement, yeah. Give me, would you, uh, would you please give me a motion to go into deliberation, Teresa? Um, I make a motion to go into deliberation. This is Teresa ranciato Vili. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I'm Richard Wilson. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Richard Aye. Wilson. Okay, all right. So I presume that carries off. Um, okay, what would you, uh, we need to talk about um, the enforcement matter on 224 Winnipeg Avenue. Jeff? Vern, why don't, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Vern, why don't you deliberate on the on the two site plans? I think that was the intent. Would yeah, make so, oh, right. you want to you get them out of the way? Yeah. Okay. I, I very good. I agree as well because the other thing is that bond issue. I think I assume Jennifer, you're going to give us some information about that after um, we we just received a submission today. Right. Um, so we don't so have it. yeah. So I I haven't even looked at it. I got no. I I hear you. All I'm saying is it wouldn't be part of deliberations because we're not going to deliberate on it because we don't no. have other information. So no. I agree. I think we go into deliberation just on the two site plan applications. So I assume that's what we're doing. So we're all set. We have a motion and a second. So right now we're in deliberations. Do we have? Okay. All in favor of going deliberation. We, we did this, but we did okay. that. We're all good. Yeah, it was unanimous. Okay. This is Ron Carlson speaking. 
Can I get a motion to approve uh, P20-7, um, Morro Motors upon uh, 576 Washington Avenue? I will make a motion to approve P20-07 for 576 Washington Avenue, their site plan. Thank you. Can I have a second? That was Jim Gilletti making that motion. Uh, Brian Cummings, I I'll second the motion. Mr. Vernon Carlson asking for a second. Can I get a second? Brian, Cum Brian Cummings, I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, okay. All in favor? Uh, aye, Teresa Ranciato Vili. Aye, Jim Gilletti. Aye, Vernon Carlson. Aye, Brian Cummings. Okay, so What's it's unanimous, Vern. Was Chris Wilson in there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much. That's good. Okay, can I <clears throat> we'll move forward to, um, to P20-12, uh, State Street, 346 State Street. We just discussed this thoroughly, and I'd like to get a motion to approve um, the, the application. Can I'll I get make a motion to approve this application, Brian Cummings? Jim Gilletti, I'll second it. Vern Carlson, can I get a second? Yeah, Jim Gilletti, I will second it. Okay. We have a motion, and it's been second. All in favor? Teresa Ranciato Vili in favor. Richard Wilson in favor. Jim Gilletti in favor. Brian Cummings in favor. Vernon Carlson in favor. It carries. Thank you much, Lee. Okay, I guess we will move. Now we'll move forward um, to the enforcement matter. Would be the next one you want to take up? Well, just before we go, because Jennifer just touched on it. So the before the the enforcement is the bond. So Jennifer, you're telling me that you submitted. Is the something that's submitted in theory the um, the affordability plan? Again, um, I've not had an opportunity to look at it. Uh, I just received it this afternoon around three o'clock. Um, it is supposed to be compliance with uh, the affordability plan in terms of okay. the reports, but I, I, ha I can't even speak to the content of it at this point. No, I get that, but in, in theory, it's got to do with the affordability plan that, that they need to give us before that before we decided at last meeting we would move on the bond. So we wanted to hear something about the affordability. So I'm not asking you what's in it, and just in theory, they're addressing that issue. Exactly, yeah, Jim, that's what this, I understand from staff. Thank you. Yeah, this is Alan Fredericks and Jim. Yeah, I did receive that uh, in and I've passed it to Jennifer, I'll pass it to you folks. It is uh, from Home Inc, who is the manager of their affordability component. So again, we'll have a look at it and, and we'll pass along to the commission what they've, they've sent, but we'll, we will review it. Jim, Jim, we can't hear you. Okay, so, sorry. Can't, there we go. This, this is Jim. This is Jim Gilletti. For purposes of the bond issue that's on the agenda, we're passing that till next month so that we can all review whatever they sent us. Is that correct? Jim, I will agree with you, Vaughn Carlson, Chairman. Yes, Jim, I think we will all have bond. We'll pass that until next month so we take a look at the affordability. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I think sure that now we'll move to. Uh, We'll move to 224 Winnipeg Avenue. Jim, did you want to get in there? Is there somebody here that's coming? Yes. This is Jennifer Coppola, your counsel. Suzanne Shore is on. Um, she is the landscape architect who did prepare the remediation plan. Suzanne, if you'd like to jump in. Sure. Um. Yes, okay. so our, the client, Sam's Food Stores, contacted our office, um, it's Suzanne Shore from Milona McBroom, um, to pre prepare a supplemental landscaping plan um, for the um, buffer adjacent to the Eaton Place condominiums. Um, so what we've done is we've provided you with a proposal to um, better reflect what was removed 
during the clearing operations. Apparently, there was a previous plan submitted that was rejected, um, which simply had a row of um, green giant arborvitaes, and it didn't really reflect what was removed uh, from from that uh, buffer zone. So, you know, we have a mix of native evergreen and deciduous species mixed in um, that that better um, will provide, you know, variety of color and, and um, year-round screening. They're relatively quick growing. All of the species that we selected were intended to grow between 24 and 30 inches a year to help amplify the, the coverage as quickly as possible. Um, you know, they were selected to provide not only just a variety of interest and, and appropriateness based on the site, but um, to be easy to maintain, relatively clean, and um, provide a quick growing screen for the neighbors. Um, I you know, just we prov we did give you um, a plan that has um, some graphic images as well um, as well as the sizes. If you have any comments um, on the proposal, I'm ready to hear them. Okay, let me let me ask you a couple things. One is, did you consult with the neighbors because they're very concerned about this? What? Is Jim Gilletti? Yeah, I keep forgetting to give my name. All right, so this is Jim Gilletti, regular member. Were the neighbors consulted about what was taken down and what you're proposing to put back? Because some of them are here and they're not happy. That question number one. And before I leave, question number two: uh, How tall is the are the trees that you're proposing? I do see one is being proposed eight to ten feet, which will be only be two feet over the fence. Well, well short of what was taken down. So tell me how this proposes to give back what was taken away. Sure. Okay. This is Suzanne Shore again. Um, the neighbors were not directly consulted by myself or any representative from our firm. We've only um, conducted business directly with um, Nadim Khalid, who is the representative of the client, um, Sam's Food Stores. We understand that the trees that were removed were a mix of um, deciduous and pine trees, and I could see from the survey that, you know, they were anywhere from 18 to 24 inches in diameter. The species themselves weren't called out, but in looking at the site and seeing what vegetation exists there, we were able to, you know, discern what would be appropriate and what would blend in and, and, and suit the location. As far as the sizes go, you know, the deciduous trees are sold as um, in caliper sizes, so the two and a half to three inch caliper size would typically be anywhere from 12 to 14 feet tall when they're planted. Um, it is possible to get a larger species, but they are, the larger you go, the more difficult they are to obtain. And the transplanting of them just becomes a little bit more precarious. We know that these will do well at the size, but if we go up to something around three, three and a half to four inches, then you'll be gaining another foot or two of height in your delivered species. Um, any larger than that would require some like, more, well, we would just have to be able to locate them. And it is difficult to find something that's over four inches in diameter. In general, we've found that um, regularly. But if um, <coughs> the, the evergreens are sold by height. So the white pines, eight to 10 feet is a good height. They usually are sold anywhere from six inches, I mean, six feet up. Um, we could likely obtain something a little bit taller. I understand that, you know, the height of the fence already is six feet. So they're, they're really only gonna have a two to three foot advantage over the height of that fence. But within three to four years, they'll have another five feet of height above that. Um, the arborvitae were selected at six feet just to match what was already installed. And those would actually be more in the background uh, behind the taller deciduous trees. But those grow the fastest, so they would gain the most height most quickly. Right. So we're starting at, you know, something around 12 to 14 feet for the, 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 um, the oak, the, the, um, the maples, and the, um, uh, the tulip tree. And then the, the other trees would be a little bit lower, but they'll, you know, grow quickly. Susan, Brian Cummings here. Yeah. Um, on the plant list drawing, landscape notes, mm -hmm. note number one, all landscape materials should be guaranteed for a period of one year from installation. What happens if they die? 
The contractor is responsible to replace them. So when they plant them, their responsibility is to maintain them through watering and, and care and weeding during the first year. And then the landscape architect comes back and you know, observes the plants, approves them if they're still in healthy condition. If they're not, they have to come back and replace them. Brian, come Brian, in. Brian, I'm sorry. This is Alan Fredrickson. What Suzanne just articulated is is more of a contractual note. In in accordance with Section 10.1.1.3 of our regulations under site plan, we get perpetual care. So if they die eight years from now, the owner of the property has to replace those trees. So it's not not an issue of that. Um, I understand what you're saying, but it but it's just more of a contractor issue with that particular note. Brian, again here, uh, Alan. Thank you, and thank you, Susan. Just to note on the the giant green abortives, they are require a lot of water in the first year when they when they get put down. And I, I don't know, do they have irrigation on that property to be able to do that along even along the sidewalk and throughout? I'm not aware if they have irrigation, but the other plantings that they've put in also need to be watered and, and irrigated during their establishment period. So typically our, our contract, when we um, typically do a landscape installation, we do a summer, a spring, or a fall planting. The fall planting wouldn't take place until late August through um, mid-October, where the weather isn't as hot and as, as intense on the new plantings. But it's the contractor's responsibility to, to water them, while, to establish them. So their, re, their source for water will either be from the store itself, from their own um, hose bib off the building, or they would have to bring in a water truck and irrigate them as needed, whether that's uh, weekly or depending on the species and the time of year. Susan, thank you. Brian Cummings again. Um, on on the, the drawing, mm -hmm. we have the wetlands buffer. And yeah. Where are, the, where are the trees that were said to be remain? They were completely on the other side of the property there. Uh, and now we're, we're planting over there. And that's needed because that's where that's they, they want the buffer. Mm -hmm. uh, but What's happening in the wetlands area? Uh, maybe it's not your, your answer, but maybe for staff, uh, what, what are we doing there? Because that's just a big giant hole. Right. This is Suzanne Shore again. Um, I did find out this morning that um, someone from wet Inland Wetlands did visit the site and will have some comments that they'll be delivering to the property owner. I believe Frank uh, Bumstead went, uh, visited the site sometime during the last week. And I expect that we'll be receiving some kind of report I had already spoken to the client about this because that area that was cleared, it was really filled with invasives, poison ivy, and vines. It was, it was really um, material that was choking down the existing trees that actually were there um, as well as the stream. So we're going to, we're, we actually discussed with them proposing to do a specialty seed mix as well as interspersing some native shrub plantings in there to stabilize and cover that slope. Um, we didn't include that on this plan because we were primarily concerned with this, um, providing an, the landscape buffer for the neighbors. But when we get the comments from the wetland commissioner, we'll incorporate those into the plan. And we could provide you with an update on that when that comes in. Yeah, this is Alan, Alan Fredrickson. Sorry, uh, but uh, my apologies. I could not get out there last week with Frank. Um, I... I was able to get there with him today. Uh, I spoke with him and his concern was just that middle area. And there are some chunks of asphalt, some chunks of brick that are in there. Frank would like to see those things removed. And uh, he, he would like to see it. He would like to see a revised plan uh, for wetlands who already has issued an approval for a permit to conduct regulate activity, he would like to see a revised plan that would address that particular middle area. And in particular, um, the removal of that bit of debris, those small chunks of uh, uh, brick, asphalt, et cetera, and any other debris, and then what would be done to stabilize that particular area on that sort of middle slope. So, we got that information today. Uh, Laura is going to articulate that in the form of a letter. Uh, in, in I've already spoken with Suzanne about it earlier today 
uh, <clears throat> just to be prepared to address it. Uh, so the idea would be they would address it with a revised drawing to wetlands, um, and we would distribute that to yeah, wetlands. Alan, this is Vern Carlson speaking. Um, those, uh, the things that you were just talking about is exactly the thing that I had been looking at and quite concerned about, is the stabling of the, uh, getting that bank, the whole wetland bank stabilized, and so it's going to hold, and removal of those bricks and, and uh, and asphalt and, and out of out of the area. Also, I was concerned about, which was brought up just a little bit ago, about watering. Uh, is there is there any irrigation there? Because if there is, it's good. If there isn't, we need to know how the water is going to get there, uh, especially with all these new trees going. I mean, this is quite an excessive plant that they're putting in there. So. We certainly want to know how they're going to be taken care of at the moment of any of that. There's, uh, Alan Fredrickson again, there's no irrigation shown on, on the plan. This particular area was really intended to, by and large, with the exception of a few uh, arborvitaes he was going to add, was supposed to be left un, untouched. So right. um, there That's was not, no irrigation proposed. Yeah, excuse me, this is Vern Carlson speaking again. I understand exactly. It was supposed to be untouched, but however, it was kind of, uh, you know, hit pretty hard. So I, I do want to know how it's going to be held together at this point. Uh, yeah, this this is Suzanne Shore. Um, so, you know, typically the landscape installer will set up temporary irrigation and let that run if. Um, as long as they have access to water from the building, which I believe they do. I'd have to verify that with the client, but I believe they do. And we've done projects like this before where just in order to just get the first season of, of watering done, usually after the first season, there's no con continuous irrigation needed for these native plants because they're selected in order to sustain themselves in the natural environment. They're not ornamentals that need special care. So as long as the first planted season, they're irrigated appropriately, um, they, they will do fine. But that would be up to the landscape contractor how they want to handle that typically. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, that'd be fine. I, excuse me, uh, Brian, I want to get back to Jim, since he really, he was really started this thing off. I want to be yeah. that by Gordy's hearing. Jim? This is Jim Gilletti, and uh, let me say this. There's a number of things about this that bothers me. And Andy, you could help me here a little bit. The last meeting we had, you had a picture of what this looked like before they tore it all down. Do you have that? Can you bring that up? Because it's yeah. we're not going to. Anyway. Jim, if I could just jump in. Uh, Jennifer Coppola, your counsel. Um, those photographs were shared uh, with uh, Chris Smith, who is counsel. Um, for the property owner. So those photographs were shared, um, and i assuming actually that they were shared with Milona McBroom as well, um, because they were acknowledged. Um, and I think that ultimately what, what occurred here um, was there were different, different recommendations made in terms of, um, you know, the types, the types of species that you're seeing based upon again, what the use of the property is, um, because I had conversations with him about keeping in mind, you know, there's light exposure here. Um, there could be road treatment that could impact um, the trees. So we got into the nitty gritty of that in terms of the selection of the species that would, would really serve what's there currently, as opposed to, you know, what was there originally. But um, Jennifer, so, Jennifer, yeah. let me stop you because you jumped in on me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Turn is to put back what was there, to give the people that live there the same buffer that was there before. And if you put 12 foot trees or 10 foot trees, that's not happening. So that's why I was asking Andy if he could put that picture up now, if possible. So, um, Suzanne, I, I apologize. What's your last name? Sure, it's fine. Thank sure. you. Uh, could comment if we're going to get that same amount of coverage, because that's what I'm looking for. I want those yeah. people that live there to know that they are going to get the same amount of coverage that they had before, which was pretty extensive, and it doesn't look like that's what's going <coughs> to 
plan. And just, this is Jim Gilletti again, in case I forgot to say who I was last time. Um, I would still say, and Vern, I'm going to ask you, whatever we do, I want this, I would like this plan to be circulated with the neighbors, and I would like it to be on the agenda next month and be noticed on the agenda next month so the neighbors could come in and make comments about it. So, but again, I'll go back to Andy. If you could bring up that picture, you were able to do it last time, I would appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. I'll share my screen now. Andy, what was that? This is Vern Carlson. Yeah, Andy should share his screen I'm just, now. I'm just sharing my screen now. So this this is the street Google Street View uh, right. from August of 2019. Okay. So in hmm. yeah. So this is Suzanne Shore again. On, you know, it's I know it's it's really unfortunate that these trees were cleared because they're all they're. The reality is, in order to get a tree that's that large delivered, we're talking thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars per tree, with specialty companies coming in with special equipment to plant them, and their likelihood of surviving is much less likely when they're that large because they just go through an enormous amount of shock so the I mean your the plants that will go in the trees that will go in are going to be half of that size initially and it's really a matter of time for them to fill in it's going to, I mean these trees have been there for decades and in order to replace exactly in kind that would be something that you would have to debate on whether that's a reasonable ask. I can't answer that. I just know that it's trying to replace a tree that's that large, those are in order to locate something that large and find somebody who would be able to successfully plant them is extremely difficult, not and nearly impossible. I've, I've personally never done a, a transplanting of such a large tree except to, um, maybe a specimen tree on a large uh, private property where it was one tree and it was very, you know, well cared for and carefully placed, but they will not be seeing a wall like that for several years. Well, this but the plants, but what we're recommending, you know, they, it, they will have a screen, it will be lower, but you know, within four or five years, they will have at least 20 feet of coverage not the 40 feet that was there, unfortunately. And, and this is Jim Gilletti again. Here's yeah. my, so you say one tree. There's a series of trees. Yeah. And what you said is exactly right. It's very unfortunate, but we yeah. didn't do it. Yeah. Somebody went and took those trees down. So I'm concerned mm -hmm. that the people that live there, where if you stood in that parking lot or in that building, you could not see the gas station before. Right. That's in, you know, in 10 feet because they're up above the level of the gas station. Correct. And feet's not going to stop them from seeing the gas station. Yeah. And that's so I don't see that as being sufficient. Just that I'm only one guy on the commission. Yeah. I don't see that as sufficient. And I don't think that's taking care of the neighbors. That's why I wanted this picture here. I hear what you're saying that. Yeah. 30 feet, but you're not going to come anywhere near halfway up those trees. What I'm looking for is a plan that's going to say these people are not going to see the gas station. That's what they had before. That's what I'm looking for again. For for one vote, that's my position. All right, this is Chris Seattle Vili. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I'm with Jim, and I'm hearing what you're saying about you know we obviously doesn't sound like from a practical growing, um, you know, uh, that we're going to be able to get trees that big, may not all of them, but it sounds like if we had at least one or two trees that were larger than what you're talking about. And this board does not take into account the expense for the landowner who did this in the first place. So that's not the issue. The issue for me is that we would be able to get at least a couple of them that are larger than what we're seeing now on the plan, because I'm not in favor of what I'm seeing either. Uh, sure, this is, Carlson, oh, excuse me, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Teresa and Jim, uh, Jim, I'm certainly with you as far as allowing Sue to come in with, with a plan. Uh, 
and we can take a look and circulate it amongst the neighbors there for next month's meeting and let them comment on what she is showing. At least uh, we'll have something to work from there. I understand the, the height of the trees and what you want and what we all want is, is, is what we're saying. But I don't think they're, gonna, they're able to do that. I'm not sure if they can. Uh, but I would like to see her sh show us a plan of what they propose to do and how <laughs> high they can really bring them and how dense that the buffer will be uh, with what they're proposing and work from that plan forward. Would that be satisfactory with Jim and I, Teresa? I have to tell you, I, I think it would behoove this applicant and not Miss Shore, the applicant to talk to the neighbors and see if they can do something that would be satisfactory to the neighbors. I don't live there. There's a fence blocking the, the blocking the gas station or the, the convenience store, but it doesn't. They weren't able to see it before. They can see it now. That was the whole purpose of the buffer was taken down. I think they should try to, to satisfy them. I'm not sure they're going to be able to, but I think they should try. Yeah. Uh, Jim, this is Ron Carlson speaking again. I, I spoke with those neighbors down there long before this thing took place, uh, when they were coming with the first application. Uh, for the drive through and uh, I spoke with those uh, people who live next door, and I also promised them that they would have the buffer left alone. I did never, th I never thought it would come to this where they would cut the buffer down. Um, more than that, there's nothing else that I put, and I feel terrible about that. And I feel an obligation to those neighbors, but I also want to be a realist to see what we can get. Say, Vern, come in there. Go ahead, Rich. This is Rich Wilson. Uh, I would certainly be in favor of getting as tall the trees as possible. A uh, an eight or ten foot tree. Once they put it in the ground, uh, for a long time, that's not going to give them any blockage to that building. I mean, I understand you can't replace yeah. a, a a forty year old tree here, but to put in an eight foot tree is kind of insulting to the neighbor. Mm -hmm. This is Suzanne Shore again. So the, the um, Eastern white pine, we have four of them to replace the four that were removed. And those are the most likely to be able to obtain at a larger size. Um, if we want to go as high as 12, 14, 16 feet, we could probably source those. Um, those would also provide more of the year round Ever, evergreen coverage that would more quickly provide the screening that they need. Um, we would, you know, we could definitely look to see what we could source for the other trees. It's not a large pallet, so we should be able to find something larger. But I know the white pine for sure, um, if you want something taller, those would be the number one species that they're interspersed to throughout the area. So they'll kind of touch each other and they'll make a better screen but they are really they do grow f two feet a year so even if we start at something 14 feet high that sh that will you know gain that much more but be happy to um, try to source something or or put on the plans that that's what is required of them but if you'd like to just would it be helpful to have um, a rendering with an elevation to show <coughs> what the proposed looks like as as it would be when it's planted versus what it would look like in 10 years because obviously the the images of these trees on the plan are mature trees so they're not right. going to be that that dense and, and large at the time of planting so yeah this is Teresa oh. from Seattle Vili. I think that would be helpful thank you for mm -hmm. me it would anyway yeah this is Jim Gilletti I feel exactly the same way if you could give an actual rendering that way we can show people what it's yeah. look like, and if you could give a rendering with the building behind it, so you have yeah. some idea of, that the, of the blockage to the building, the blockage of seeing the building. Yeah, I think that would be helpful too, because just looking at a plan doesn't really explain anything. And even though, I mean, the canopies of these trees are shown at 25 or half of what their mature canopy will be, but they will be a lot larger, uh, which is why we can't really jam many more in there. But if an elevation is given to them, I think that'll give them a much better idea of what they can expect and then go from there. And if, 
And this is Ron Carlson, the chairman speaking. Um, you know, I agree with you 100% there. If would you have that something ready mid month so it could be circulated to the neighbors so they could take a look at that? Mid July? Yeah. Yes. We could we could have something prepared for them for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, that's fine with me. Uh, Suzanne, this is, this is Alan Fredrickson. Uh, just kind of piggybacking on the increase in size here. Yeah. I know you're saying the the PS is the uh, the white pine, you know, could readily be sourced larger. Um, what what more could you do on the green giant arborvitae? That's another more common species. Um, is that something that you could also start yeah, a little bigger? We could get the, we could probably get eight to 10 footers and I could see, um, that's not, you know, it's not standard stock when it's larger than that, but we could call around and see who's got availability on larger species. I, like I said, I had put the six inches, six footers in there because that's what was also planted, um, uh, in the, in the, on the other Southern, uh, border. But if you, we could for sure, I think eight to 10 foot, um, varieties that would be available and I could see if there's something larger. Yeah, this is Alan Fredrickson. Uh, the, if the larger you could you can get to, and put in a in a yeah. a real so give everybody a real picture of what they're looking at. Uh, that was Vern yeah. Carlson speaking. Yeah I thought I gave my name there got to get your turn up that hearing aid there for me so so Susan, Brian Cummings here, if I can get a question in. You there? Hello. Um, okay. Uh, Brian, you have anything to put in? Yeah, I, I do, actually. <laughs> Susan, are you, yes. are you okay with the snow shelf being so close to the giant green abortives, which are the smaller trees on that side of the uh, store? Yeah, I mean, the arborvitae are pretty tough trees. They're salt tolerant. I think they would be okay. We just wanted to back off from the parking area and make sure there was a little bit of a buffer for them to either put snow or for people to get in and out of the cars without without getting up too close to that curb. We wanted to focus on keeping everything back towards the, the fence line Okay, without, and, and, without overhanging the fence to, uh, fence line too much. Okay, maybe for Alan and, and Andy, um, I see the, the, the picture that uh, Andy put on the screen. Was the did we get a photometric drawing for this? And was that done with the height of the trees as they are in this picture being considered? Because things could change now with the smaller trees, and there could be some light trespass. Andy Bevilacqua, Brian, yeah, Alan Fredrickson. I uh, I don't believe there was a photometric plan. What they provided was lighting data, which included the style of the fixture and that it would be a cutoff fixture and what the height of the fixture was. The plan was so limited uh, that they, they did not do a photometric plan. Um, in they were, they were with the dense, not to beat a dead horse, but with the dense buffer that had been there, it didn't seem like that was a paramount issue at the time. Okay. This is Teresa ranciato Vili, so I'm gonna request that we get a revised photometric plan because that was a great catch, Brian, you're correct. Um, I think the lighting may now affect the neighbors more so since they cut down the buffer. Um, also, so I'm hearing a couple of things. I agree with Jim, I think the neighbors should get a plan and be able to weigh in on this. Um, I also am hearing S Suzanne that we need to get, I mean, the, the planting would start late August, early September for fall planting. So mm -hmm. are we, are we in line with, with getting this over to the neighbors? I haven't heard anyone else weigh in on whether that works for our August 3rd meeting, but I agree they should be allowed to speak. I don't know if, if we need town council to weigh in on that or we just make that decision. This is Alan Fredrickson again. I, uh, all, all I can say, uh, I haven't talked to anybody about any of that, but all along, uh, Chris Smith, um, the owner's counsel, had indicated a willingness to go to the neighbors and to try to, um, you know, speak with them and work out, uh, you know, the best option for them. So I'm just kind of hoping that that would, that that would not be an issue. 
Hope, hope is a really good thing, but it doesn't seem like he's done it. So while while he says he has a willingness, as we, have we seen any indication that he's quite willing? It doesn't well, I think we just have to reach out. Yeah, reach out to him now and and okay. uh, and pressure for that. Sorry, right, Ellen, Jim. Jim uh, that was Teresa Ranciatavili. Jim, did you hear that? Yeah. Or? Well, yeah, this is Jim Gilletti. I, I hear it, but you're not answering the question about the it being put on the agenda as available for public comment at the next meeting. So I, I would like the people to be able to comment on it. Can we do so that? Jen this is Jennifer Capoli, your counsel. Do you want me to weigh in on that now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, what we would do, I mean, we don't typically have public comment on enforcement matters. We could certainly just include in the agenda that the public will be allowed to speak and that and that the plan is available, um, that the plan is in the meeting materials that have been posted. You know, I can, I can draft a little blurb um, to include in the agenda so that the public has an understanding that they can participate and it'll get posted that way. Perfect. But... Uh, Vern Carlson speaking. Yes, uh, uh, Jennifer, please do that, and and that certainly satisfies me. Uh, Jim, is that good with you? Yeah, no, that's good with me. Then, then if we get the plan, I would hope this is Jim Gilletti again. I would hope Chris or somebody meets with them. But whether they meet with them or not, I know some of them are, are watching and listening. Um, we'll get the the plan will become available. Jennifer, as she said, she'll have it on the website. They'll know that they can come and make comments. They'll look at it. I'm not worried about it, that, that they will be involved and they'll be here for the next meeting if we put it on for the next month. So that works for me. Okay. Is everybody good with this? Is Vern Carlson speaking? Is, is all, all members this of... Is Teresa ranciato Vili. I am good with that. Okay. Uh, this is Rich Wilson. I'm good with that. Okay. Brian? This is Brian. I'm good with that, Vern. Okay, um, very good. And that's what we'll do, uh, Jennifer. If you would do that, I would appreciate that. We could move this item along. Yeah, and Alan Frederson, just to be clear and answer Jim's question, absolutely. We'll put it on public comment August 3rd. Good enough. This is Paul Wyman. I just have one question. The rendering that you're talking about, Suzanne, is that going to be current and um, – like five years down the road, what you propose, I'm sorry, current, uh, oh. the current view, uh, what you propose in a five-year look down the road, is that uh, what you're yes. thinking about? Yes, this is Suzanne Shore. Um, yeah, and what I was thinking of is showing them what it would look like when it goes in and then what it would look like in five to six years, just so they can understand that, you know, what, how, how it will fill in because it really um, will My help paint the picture for them. Paul Wyman again. It might be good to show them the way it looks now. Yeah. Which they know. Oh, you, the existing. Oh, you the existing with nothing. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying the existing conditions as right. uh, newly planted, and then five years down the road. Correct. Okay. Paul, yeah. Paul, are you good with that now? Uh, yeah, Paul Wyman. Yes, good with that. Okay. Good. Uh, so. Hey, this is this is Teresa Ranciato Vili. I just want to thank Suzanne. That was. Really, you know, thank you for trying to work with us here. No, I understand. I mean, everybody feels terrible about this. Nobody likes to see trees cut down, even if, you know, no matter no matter what. And I wouldn't be happy if I was living there either. I understand how upset they are. But I did, I mean, in, even in speaking with the clients, they really don't want to be bad neighbors, you know. I mean, they want to do what they need to do. Um, and we'll do the best we can to satisfy everybody. I, I just real, realistically... You can't replicate exactly what was there, but you know we'll we'll try to make the case that you know what we're going to, what we're proposing is is going to work for them, and you know like I said we'll work with getting the species as large as we can and work with you on that. I'm speaking. Okay, Suzanne, thank you very much uh, for your efforts and your right. input, and, and uh, the earlier you can have those ready for us, the better it would be. I think. Right. Yeah, we'll shoot for mid month. So within within another ten days or so. Okay, uh, can you tell me where um, who I should provide these to? We'll we'll send PDFs. Oh, just give them to staff, please. Uh, Alan staff. Fredrickson, land use administrator. Okay. Uh, yeah, send them to me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we have this covered now. Jim. 
This is Jim Gilletti. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, Jim, are you okay with this? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Teresa, you're good, and everybody's good now. So all right, let's move forward. Um, I guess that's it. We're going to move forward. The uh, We don't have any minutes. Minutes are not ready for, uh, we'll have to do the minutes next month for June. And is there anything else that would be going to come before the commission tonight? Um, yeah, Vern, um, yes. this is Teresa. There, we have the um, zoning enforcement actions. Yes, go ahead. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get to you. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Teresa. Go ahead. Oh. All right. Well, I, I mean, I, I wanted to discuss. I don't know if the board, how the board wants to discuss them. Um, I particularly wanted to ask on, on a few, um, 336 State Street, the cease and desist order, installation of drainage improvements. Um, there's a preliminary, preliminary plan received for review. Um, I, we don't have that, so can somebody from staff discuss that, particularly I'm interested in hearing from Andy because I did go out there and, you know, there's storm sewers already installed with we us seeing no plan. So could we discuss that, please? Teresa, this is Alan Fredrickson. Uh, we had circulated just an electronic form, that plan. I still have not been able to review that that plan. We were intending to meet with uh, that um, prospective um, applicant and uh, Andy and I have not been able to get together yet in our review of that plan. Um, so Andy, this is Teresa. Have you not been out to that site yet? I have not. I have not. I've not seen the plan in any kind of detail. So I mean, we've got to get, get a look at that. Okay, so just to catch some people up on the board, um, this is the property over on State Street, actually adjacent to one that we just approved the plan for. Um, and the landowner, unbeknownst to anybody in the town, went ahead and installed four or five, I don't remember, uh, storm sewers, all connected. Um, there is no drainage plan. so. My concern here is one, he did it without talking to anybody in the town. And number two, now if it's not, if it is, if it doesn't work, which one is very much sunken in the ground in the back, um, what do we do about that? And I'm gonna maybe, you know, our town attorney can weigh in because what, what do we do? Laura Magarasi is on tonight she is participating she did already issue correspondence on it um, I think that we need to obviously let this play out I have not seen the submission myself um, but obviously they responded immediately to the action she already took so I think we have to attempt to resolve it with them um, as the first step and then if it's you know if it's not resolved then we talk about further action but at this point it's at the incipient stage where she issued correspondence to them and they've responded and they've made a submission that staff hasn't had the opportunity yet to review. Okay, Vern Carlson. Teresa, is that good with you? Are you satisfied? It, you know, Vern, I think you know the answer. I'm not because well, I know, when the cease and desist was issued, the work was already completed. So. There was nothing for them to cease and desist upon. And I hear that they gave us a, a preliminary, you know, whatever application. But what do we do if those drains are not in compliance with what our engineer needs? We have no calculations. I guess I'm asking, do we, what what's our recourse? Do we make them pull them up? Do we make them change them? I'm looking for an answer from our town engineer. I mean, what we don't usually run into this, but what do we do with this if it, it's not in compliance and the calculations don't work out, depending on what they want to do back there? And I'm telling you, there's a huge slope. So that's kind of my question. And maybe I'm 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 jumping ahead a little bit, but I would like to understand that. Yeah, okay. I mean. Uh, this is Andy Bevilacqua. If, if it's not put in in a 
accordance with how it should be, then it's got to get ripped out and redone. I mean, it's simple as that. Uh, but, you know, we, I have to have an opportunity to review it. Uh, I don't know if there's any calculations that were provided. I certainly have not seen any. So I need all that information in order to really understand what we're looking at there and, uh, you know, what the potential effects are on that property or the surrounding properties. All right. I mean, that's, that's, you answered my question, Andy. Thank you. That was my question. Um, Alan, did, have we received any calculations yet? Alan Fredrickson, no ma'am. Burn Carlson, Teresa, anything further? Um, well, are you talking about anything further on the questions? Anything further you want to discuss on, on zoning enforcement? Um, well, I mean, is Laura going to respond? Is that how we're working this? That's how we would usually work it. Um, you know, I have a question on 15 Middletown Avenue. Well, this, and this is Jim Gilletti. Just, I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing here. Right. Like, so with, with that answer that we got on State Street, which is that we don't have a complete answer, so that will remain on this list of items, and we'll look at it again next month, you know, and see if there is if something's been submitted. And by that time, hopefully, we'll know what's been submitted. Is that what we're doing? Alan Fredrickson, yes, for sure. Okay. And, and I also, you know, would just like to say, I, I, I believe the two events are unrelated. I, th I, I think that uh, the letter that went from Laura to the property owner um, was received. I think, uh, I think I mentioned last month that this particular application that's pending is something that's kind of been on a, I had an inquiry, I don't know, a good uh, four, five months ago, and the gentleman's been working on, on the plan. So, I, you know, I'm kind of hoping that the application gets made soon. Andy and I do have to get back to him. I think with our um, getting on with our meeting schedule, the applicant is interested in moving it forward very, very quickly. Um, hopefully, Andy and I can look at it this week and and get back to the gentleman and and get a get an application made and on the books. Jim, thanks here. Um, Burn Carlson, Jim. Yeah, Jim Gilletti again. Let me, I'm a little confused about something. So did this, this non-applicant put in sewers or drain, you know, drains, you know, uh, what are they, concrete drains like you see with a grate over them? Is that what they are? Dorm Jim, sewers. Storm Jim, it's Alan Fredrickson. The, the, um, I don't think the, the applicant did the work. I think the owner uh, did, did the work. Well, who submitted the, this is Jim Gillette again. So who submitted the, or is supposed to submit the calculations? The owner? The plan itself was submitted by this proposed applicant who I've been, you know, speaking with off and on for, for four months or so. All right, so I'm confused. But to the storm drains, do you, need a, do you need a building permit to put in the storm drain, or can anybody put in storm drains anytime they want? Is Alan Fredrickson okay? That's a good question. Um, it, it, generally speaking, people don't make drainage improvements uh, without planning and zoning approval or town engineer approval or what have you. Um, the owner, I guess, made a decision to put these things in, not this potential applicant. The applicant does show um, catch basins. I'm just going to say I didn't look real close, but roughly in the spot where these four catch basins that Teresa and I looked at are. So it seems to be reflective of a some sort of joint effort. But again, the use itself and the gentleman's application seem to be not directly coming from the owner. It seemed like the uh, the owner put the catch basins in to the best of my knowledge, not this applicant. No. And this is Teresa Ranciato Vili again. Um, and by putting in those catch basins, his plan was not in compliance with what is there now, which is how we 
uh, how the town determined to give us cease and desist because it was it was not in compliance. Yeah, this is Alan Fredrickson. Not being in compliance uh, means we have no plan that shows those catch basins, right. uh, which is correct. And that's why ultimately, uh, as you know, the decision was made to give him uh, the cease and desist. So, yeah, he's not in compliance. Hi, this is Jim Gillette. I'm thoroughly confused, but, but this will come back to us again <laughs> next month and we can talk about it, right? Fair, fair enough, yes. Yeah. Back to us again, Jim. Vern Carlson speaking. Okay. okay. Got to back to us again, Jim, for sure. You know, we got to have a site plan, and this bees being on the site plan, and then we can take a look at it, and we know exactly what we're talking about. So, so this is Jim Gillette again. First of all, and I, and I thank Jennifer for telling us Laura is on here. Laura, thank you for the list. Thank you for the information. Uh, this is exactly what we were looking for, so I find it very helpful. At some point, Jennifer, I think we need to tackle the B and B issue. There seems to be a legitimate legal issue about B and Bs. I mean, uh, is it a business? Is it not a business? What's the deal? I see there was a cease and desist with Laura. I appreciate you doing that. But if I understand that last comment on the cease and desist with the B and B, they just agreed not to say that it's available online for large gatherings and that sort of thing. Not that they wouldn't continue to use it. Um, so they're not going to, that's the way I read what that response is. I could be wrong. And Laura, if you can talk, you can tell me, but, um, it would appear to me, we got to, at some point, try to address the B and B issue. I would presume you're right, Jim. Vern Carlson speaking. Um, are we good with this, uh, at this point, Jim? Yeah, I'm good at for sure. Point, at this point, are we good with this? And I'm good. This, this will come around to us again? Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. Yes, I'm good. Okay, good. Teresa? No problem. Move on. Good. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, Teresa? Yes, hey, this is Teresa Ranciato Vili. I am fine with this right now. Okay, good. Any of the other commission members have a yeah, problem? Well, Brian, Brian Cummings here. This is Brian Vern. I do have a. a when I was going on the Massimo Drive to look at that site, which is off tonight, again, passed by 400 Sacker Point Road, Serga wise which is looking more beautiful than ever. Um, and it, it says that uh, Laura is working with town council and that the courts are closed for land use matters at this time. What can we do about Serga wise I mean, it's, it's getting worse. So, so again, Jennifer, Capo, counsel, uh, Jennifer Capoli, your counsel, I'm not hearing Laura. Is anybody else hearing her? No. I don't. I think she's maybe not able to um, unmute herself. Um, I tried unmuting her um, because I'm not sure about the, the Airbnb matter. That's not something that I've been involved with as of yet. But um, with regard to 400 Sackett Point Road, um, there have been many discussions and discussions across departments um, because there have been a variety of issues at, at that property, um, not just zoning issues, um, but also building and fire. Um, so over the course of the many months that this has been on um, you know, everybody's list, uh, there have been uh, incremental advances made as far as compliance is concerned. Um, so we are, while we are not fully there, um, you know, there has, there have been uh, some remedies made. Um, we're, we're continuing to talk about this property across departments um, and, uh, you know, the, the main tenant, um, the property owner, um, counsel for the main tenant, um, you know, the communications continue. So we're hoping that eventually we're going to be able to bring it into full compliance. Um, we are actually going to be meeting as staff this week on this property as well as another. Um, so it may be that, you know, at your next meeting, we'll be able to give you a further update if we're going to revisit some of these properties at that time. So Brian Cummings, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Ron Cross speaking. Uh, Brian, you good with that now? Yes, I am. Uh, Vern, Brian Hello. Cummings, you say I'm, I'm glad it's continuing. We're 
continue to address it because it's it, it needs okay. to be. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just turn it across and go. Um, I did ask this before if there was anything else to come before the, the board. I guess we discussed it all. Can, okay, I, just, is, oh, that, can I just ask one more question? This is Teresa okay. Avili. I, I see the comment on 565 Washington Avenue that were people living in the offices or is that where were people living? Teresa, this is Alan Fredrickson. That was a, a massage therapy uh, office and they were shut down by the state um, for some other improprieties. Um, part of the accusation was that there were beds present and there was a thought that that was the case. <clears throat> I don't think it was, the issue was that it was becoming a principal residence at all. They had other uses for them. Teresa? Thank you. Vern Carlson speaking. You get the message? <laughs> it was so subtle. Yes, I received the message. Okay. It was so wonderful. Uh, Teresa? I like a motion to adjourn. I don't know. I can't. I'm going deaf. This, this is Jim Ridgeway. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, this I'll second Teresa. Rich's motion. Okay. Okay. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Yeah, Jim Gilletti. I second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And all in favor? Teresa Ricciato Vili in favor. Jim Gilletti in favor. Rich Wilson in favor. Brian Cummings in favor. Vern Carlson in favor. Thank you very much, board members. <laughs> the preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.